So, I played the new Five Nights at Freddy's game. It's, um... I, I It's a FNAF game. I, kind of. It's, uh... uh, uh it's pretty bad. <laughs> now, I have always at least had an appreciation for the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise, and while I haven't personally played every single game in the series, I've at least gone out of my way to watch a playthrough or a YouTuber play it in some kind of fashion. I think the lore is genuinely pretty interesting. I mean, it's excessively vague at points, and it's pretty clear Scott Cawthon had no idea what this would turn into when he started off, but it's still really fun to try and understand the mystery and, you know, find the secrets that act as puzzle pieces to bring clarity to the mystery that is this murder Chuck E. Cheese. And, you know, all this while also still having a simple but entertaining gameplay loop. If not a little bit stressful. <laughs> When I played this game on stream, I was genuinely kind of excited and prepared to just upload a funny moment haha video where you could just laugh at me being a big scaredy baby and whatnot. Follow me on Twitch, by the way. Twitch.tv slash Ampo underscore. I try and stream at least every other day, but, you know, college. And while you're at it, follow the YouTube channel too. Highlights and more will be uploaded here at least pretty regularly. Shameless plugs aside, I was pretty disappointed with the game. And I think it showed a little bit in my gameplay. How the hell do I get here, though? Look, no one's looking for you because you're a fat, unloved bitch, Chica. Shut up and get out of my face before I fucking murder you and turn you into a fucking skillet chicken dinner thing. I got her. Um, because, you know, they kind of forgot it to code in, um, goodness. Okay, this game, okay, this game is pretty bad. This game sucks! Anyways, to start things off, you've probably heard how glitchy this game is, and so did I before I played it, but... Nothing would have prepared me for what was in store. This game is a mess. Some of the glitches and bugs are so blatantly obvious, it's nearly a miracle that they weren't caught before release. If it says anything, Google tells us that the game should be around 7-ish eh, hours to get the normal ending. The current speedrun record is at 3 minutes and 7 seconds. It, that, that's insane, right? If you watch the run, it's almost unintelligible, clipping through the world and skipping locked doors at every turn. For one, if you turn the voice volume all the way down, it just skips the dialogue, causing Freddy to just kind of thousand yard stare you instead of giving the normal spiel. Speaking of Freddy, you can wear him as a sort of Evangelion mecha fursuit, and if you just press the jump button right before you get into him, it caused the entire game to unload. Walls, enemies, floor, objects, everything just disappeared. I Meaning you can take your Metal Vorefather and just walk around in any locked door that's supposed to halt your progress. And this is just scratching the surface of the glitches and bugs that this game is riddled with. I'm convinced this game wasn't even playtested. Even worse, the Princess Quest arcade cabinets that are used to find one of the secret endings of the games were built for mouse and keyboard. That doesn't sound that bad, right? Wrong. They were built for just mouse and keyboard. If you wanted to play on controller, or god forbid, play the game on console, you couldn't control the game at all. You couldn't move, you couldn't attack, you couldn't even back out of the game. So you just had to turn off your console and restart from your last save, wherever it was, and good lord did this game have a bad save system. No auto saves, just manual saves. And the manual saves could be hours before your current gameplay position. And that's not even half of the game-breaking bugs. If I wanted to cover every bug in this game, this video would only be about bugs. But there's more bad about this game. The textures didn't load properly, animations chugged at negative FPS, entire rooms just didn't load sometimes, the AI was terrible and never could find out where you were, and it all just serves to pull you out of the world, and never have I felt so unimmersed in a game that seriously tried to scare you. And, oh yeah, that's another thing. This horror game just doesn't have that much horror in it? Now, I will give credit where credit is due, okay? The design of this map is fan-fucking-fastastic. I honestly love the pizza place, and it's incredibly detailed and well-modeled. The texturing can be hit or miss, but the idea is clearly there. There was a half-decent game here at one point in development. Obviously, a lot of thought and time was put into the titular animatronics of the game. They look awesome! Not very scary, but awesome nonetheless. Design-wise, these are my favorite animatronics yet, and I think this is the first FNAF where the robots could believably entertain children? Because up until this point, I don't know how any kid would get within five feet of these characters. I mean, 
I mean, look at this fazzle. Gah. But that's the problem, isn't it? At least for me, the main horror aspect of all the previous FNAF games was how creepy the animatronics looked, and it only got worse when they started to move. I have a deep-seated fear of Chuck E. Cheese, and that's not a joke. I went there as a kid once, and Chucky was on stage, and I just cried. The entire time. Just, I hated it. I hated it. I hated it. <laughs> so these games hit me, hit me in a sore spot, and this one didn't even scare me. Even the toy robots, who are supposed to have a new revamped and less creepy look in the lore, still hit that perfect point in the uncanny valley that still makes your skin curl, at least a little. But these new guys? They're too pleasant looking. I know as you start to disassemble them one by one, they take on a new damaged form, and it adds a bit to the creep factor, but that's only in the later part of the game. The majority of the time you're just running from these cute furry robots that really are just that. <laughs> cute! <laughs> maybe it's just me, but it's hard to be scared when you see this thing run towards you. Stressful maybe, yes, because you don't want to do the same section over for the hundredth time. Again, saving was terrible, but it was never really scary. Honestly, I'm kind of a wuss when it comes to horror games, as my Twitch chat will definitely agree, but this game just didn't scare me. Again, the Pizzaplex is wonderfully designed as a really cool 80s themed superplex, but it is in no way a scary environment. Just because you tell me I'm about to be murdered, I won't care if the setting, music, and antagonists are charming, bright, and uplifting. It's really hard for me to be scared. Pretty much the only place that gave me some kind of creep factor was the sewers, and Th they were just sewers, a classic horror setting that really had little FNAF charm. Another thing that negates the fear factor of the game is the fact that you get a literal gun within the first hour or two of playing. No, I am not kidding. You get a gun that can stun the animatronics and stop them in their chase. One of the scariest parts of FNAF games up to this point is just the feeling of helplessness as these powerful robots come for your life and there's nothing you can do about it. But now I have a gun that lets me walk wherever the hell I want without a care in the world. This and the camera that does almost the same thing serve to remove any last ounce of scary this game ever had. I was only able to make it for four hours of gameplay before I physically just had to quit because I was way too frustrated with the gameplay glitches and the fact that it just wasn't scary. Luckily, I was able to get a refund though. Even though I was way past the minimum hours to qualify for a Steam refund, something makes me think Steam has been giving out quite a few refunds for this game. Eh, I just ended up watching Markiplier play it instead, and it was clear that even the king of FNAF wasn't enjoying this game. Like, at all. <laughs> now, if the glitches and lack of true horror wasn't enough to put me off of this game, one final aspect truly put the nail in the coffin for me. Even if they had perfected the bugs and had the game operate as they intended upon release, the game itself was just bad. <laughs> the story seems hastily put together and even lazy at times. The gameplay loop was repetitive and often unforgiving. And even the secrets and the collectibles of the game just really aren't worth it. Like, thank you game, I'm so glad that I spent hours getting the Roxy eyes just to find the Freddy Fazbear shirt. Yo, that's drippy. Ooh, that's drippy. If you really take a look at the core points of gameplay that the story revolves around, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Of course the objective in its most simple form is the same as any other FNAF. <laughs> Try not to get absolutely game ended by these ghost furries like an absolute chump, but this game clearly tries to be more than that. Every game before us tried to tell their part of the story in its own way, whether it be through secrets hidden by repetitive but charming and skill based gameplay, or like Sister Location, providing a more narrative driven experience with horror elements. At first glance, it seems like Security Breach wanted to merge these two ideas, providing a free roam, story driven experience that simply revolved around the same gameplay loop of a glorified stealth mission hiding from the animatronics as you walk from point A to point B. But that's just it. That, that's all there was to do. Walk. This glorified 24 hour challenge simulator gives you the initial goal to escape, and you just spend all your time walking or crouching around the map while avoiding the same three enemies. You'd think there'd be more to do in this small pizza plex thing place. You know, there's so many different attractions that is just dangled in front of your face. There's a bowling alley, but you can't bowl. There's a race car way, but you can't race. There's a golfing minigame, I guess, but it is so bad. And the laser minigame is even worse. There was just no effort put into any of the side content. All the effort was put into the main content, and even the main content sucked. While the other games revolved around one key gameplay loop, mostly just sitting in a chair, monitoring cameras and closing doors and the likes, 
It involved a certain skill level that made it interesting and fun to learn the patterns of the various monsters and furries that just wanted you to become a furry too. I mean, they'd achieved that goal by, by stuffing you in a metal fursuit that I didn't really have much room for a human that, you know, wasn't dead and... But, you know, the thought that counts. But every animatronic acted differently and you had to learn how to cope with them when they appeared. Security Breach's loop just wasn't varied enough to be interesting. All the robots acted the same and you only avoided them just by walking away. You practically didn't even have to sneak for the entirety of the game if you were just good enough at sprinting away. Not to mention if you just jump on any elevated surface, the animatronics AI couldn't find you. I guess they forgot to code the look up feature? I, uh, uh huh? And while the initial main objective is to escape, somewhere along the way I think the developers kind of forgot that. Gregory just kind of makes a transition from scared lost kid to psycho final destination furry killer and randomly decides he just wants to take out his prepubescent rage on the other animatronics. Jesus, I, d I don't think the animatronics are the real scary part of this game. I think it's, I think it's preteens. Once your objective randomly turns to murder, you begin to rip out key components of the antagonistic robots and use them to upgrade Freddy to make him stronger and whatnot. One would think you would use them to aid in your escape, right? But nah, that's too easy. The main point of the late game story is nothing but acquiring these upgrades, and they are only used to get collectibles and secrets! Oh, it's actually insane. It's actually insane how they thought this was a good idea. The upgrades have no effect or importance on the story whatsoever. One final crazy thing this game added into its story still baffles me, to be honest. When you get two out of the three upgrades by disassembling two of the three evil robots that have been trying to kill you this whole time, the game suddenly switches gears and says, hey look, it's 6 a.m., it's time to leave, bye! It, it feels totally rushed and out of the blue, and you can just leave and get one of the few endings of the game. There was no plot resolution, no progression, and honestly, not much story at all. You just kind of ran around for a bit and then left. You can choose to stay and disassemble the last animatronic and try to get the secret endings that are just as unsatisfying by the way, there's really no resolution or explanation for anything that is happening. But the most ridiculous thing is that once you reach 6am, you can't save anymore! You have to complete more than a third of the entire game without being able to save? What? What? Why? Why would they? Why would they? This game sucks. <laughs> okay, maybe that was a bit much. I apologize, but still, my points are valid. But without further ado, thanks for watching the video. If you want to see my gameplay of this, I have a full VOD of the four hours that I managed to get through on my VODs channel and an edited highlight video on my second channel. I was going to put the edited highlights video on the main channel, but um, that was when I expected the game to be good, so I decided to make this one instead. And honestly, a lot of things combined to make that playthrough really get on my nerves. I was not having any of it. The, I was hyped for the game and it turned out to be bad. I had COVID, I was locked in quarantine for way too long, and classes were starting soon. So I just was in an interesting mindset. So I decided to put it on the second channel. So if you want to see me just be pissed at a video game for like 30 minutes, go check that out. And you know, without further ado, thanks for watching. I've been Ampo. Subscribe for the YouTube channel if you want more. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Go check out the Twitch streams. I try and stream every other day. Like I said, twitch.tv slash ampo underscore. And thank you for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day.